So I'm Judy Fetter, the Executive Director of uh, JCCV, and I welcome you uh, to join us at the Spiritual Health Series Rosh Hashanah 2020 Start, Keeping Inner Peace, Spirituality and Connection. So firstly, I acknowledge and pay respects to the elders and traditional owners of the land of the Boon Wirang, Wirangjeri people of the Kulin Nation, where I live in Malvern. Uh, tonight, we wish to discuss Rosh Hashanah in a COVID world, the redefining of Rosh Hashanah uh, and how we're labeling it as the 2020 style, quite different from everything else that we've known before. Spending the Yom Tov period in social isolation is a challenge we never wanted to face. Living near but far from our close family and friends who we normally share a Yom Tov meal or meet at shul over the holidays is definitely not what we were all hoping for. Adapting to changing times with positive messages is what we wish to discuss tonight. As part of our focus on spiritual health, the JCCV is pleased to welcome back two professionals who we share their insights on how to make the most of celebrating Rosh Hashanah this year and offer ideas to achieve meaningful experiences for you and those closest to you. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Sharona Blum who's a social worker with 30 years experience in varied community and health settings. During the challenging time, she is particularly focused in assisting community members in taking care of their own emotional and physical well-being. Sharona has a real interest in spiritual health and the impact it has on one's well-being. Another area of her expertise is trauma which can have a real effect on how people respond in certain situations. In this session, Sharona would like participants to come away with the tools and confidence to prepare for this very different Rosh Hashanah. So Sharona will also provide strategies for self-care and I really welcome Sharona back for uh, this evening. Rabbi Gabby Kaltman leads um, the Ark Centre in East Hawthorne, an Orthodox community centre which um, considers with a shawl in the middle, as they refer to themselves. Through his inclusive approach to Judaism, Rabbi Gabby has redefined the 21st century synagogue within the context of modern orthodoxy with a greater focus on song and spirituality. He also holds a Master of Social Work and is Chairman of Melbourne Fight Back Against Parkinson's Inc. and is also an AFL Multicultural Community Ambassador. So he gets around. <laughs> I welcome Rabbi Gabby and Sharona and now pass over to Sharona to uh, start the discussion today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you, Judy, for that very lovely introduction. I hope I live up to everything you've said about me. Um, I've also got a, a comprehensive um, presentation prepared, and if I seem to go over time or whatever, just give me that wind-up signal so I've got enough, so Gabby's got enough time to um, participate as well. So um, I want to say that I hope you're all doing okay under these current restrictions. Um, in my part of this presentation, I hope I can leave you with a sense of excitement for the high holidays, be it in lockdown, and help you look at different and more innovative ways to find connection and celebrate Rosh Hashanah 2020. Um, it goes without saying it's going to be a very different Rosh Hashanah this year, but it doesn't need to be in a negative way that, or that it will necessarily be disappointing. As with Pesach, we might actually um, use this as an, as an excuse to do more, to be more creative and innovative in achieving inner peace, spirituality and connection. Even though this Rosh Hashanah will look different, it do, as I said before, different doesn't mean bad. So we, we can try and look for the positive in, in this situation and I'll give you some insight into how we can do that. Um, 
Every year, Rosh Hashanah provides us with the opportunity to reflect, learn, and plan for the year ahead of us. As human beings, we can be resilient, tenacious, and adaptable. So the ability to feel what it is, and that's what makes us human and different from other um, groups. Even though um, our emotions and desires do not define us, it does serve as our motiva motivation to want more, be more, and to give more every day. Oh, there's the, sorry. Um, so a, a need for connection. I think the, the main aim of this talk will be how we can get around our needs of our need for connection and, and incorporate that into um, celebrating Rosh Hashanah, be it without the shul and without the family, the, the extended family present. So we all know that human connections are basic human drive and and loan have low a consequence of missing this connection is loneliness and that can be the underpinning of a lot of psychological distress and that can be particularly magnified through the high holidays which are traditionally spent in shul or and with our families um, there's been really recent studies, the Australian Bureau of Statistics have, have reported that loneliness, loneliness was the most common reported COVID-related personal stress. So, you know, it, it usually, and it will be magnified this yonder for a lot of people. But the impact of COVID has been profound all over the world and it's forced us to be more creative and because things have been so restrictive. So now we need to think more creatively about how to hold memories and how to create spiritual encounters, particularly during this time. So, um, and as I said, there are many things that we will miss, but there are many new memories that we can make as well. So Rosh Hashanah, as we all know, um, or most of us know, means head of the year, but the root of Shana is also shinoi, which means change in Hebrew. So shana tova, the blessing or the greeting that we usually say to our, you know, friends and family, literally means have a good change. So challenging individuals to examine routines, habits, behaviours, relationships, and identify with confidence and hope to make and create new memories and um, face change in the present for, a, for a, a brighter future. So as Rosh Hashanah celebrates the creation of the world, and this year we have an opportunity to create a new experience of the high holidays at home. So, um, as we look at we think about the holidays this year i mean myself I've, I've had to ponder some questions and some of these questions that we can consider is do you want to try and replicate a traditional synagogue experience at home or try something different um who are the people you want to share the holiday with which will be a bit more difficult because of the restrictions um what are the songs smells and tastes you associate with rosh hashanah and what are the key traditions that you know you want to perform for yourself or share with your family um, and what do I need spiritually and emotionally right now? So how I can design a Rosh Hashanah experience for myself and my family that meets me where I am at this point. So here are some suggestions that I've come up with. So getting ready, we can even, even though Rosh Hashanah is a week or week and a half away, we can already start to get ready we can prepare. So the entire month of Elul, which is the lead up to um, Rosh Hashanah, um, is a time of ref reflection and spiritual um, preparation. So, and also between Rosh Hashanah, there are 10 days, the 10 days of repentance when we closely examine our deeds and repair broken relationships. So in order to get ready, we can get a jar, very simple thing, keep a glass jar in, pl in a place that you see often in the days leading up to Rosh Hashanah, write notes and place them in the jar. Can be the name of someone you wanna pray for, a question you wanna ask, a character trait that you wanna work on. This will help you get into the mindset of this time of year and give you something to focus on during your prayers or reflection, whatever you choose to do um, over Yontif and watch the jar fill up as Rosh Hashanah approaches.
Another thing that's, there's a, like these sessions, there's a lot of um, Zoom sessions or um, Facebook groups and there's studies available. So one of the benefits of this time where we, a lot of us have more time on our hands is a variety of online classes now available. Or you, or you can just search for some articles or webinars relating to the high holidays if you want to prepare that way. Um, another way is just creating a mood. So as we'll be unable to attend school in person this year, we could still make up for ourselves um, a place of prayer or makom to fila or reflection in our homes. So we can pick a spot, um, an area of the house that you could designate for prayer or just to sit and reflect. So what energy do you want it to have? What, what, you know, what chair will you use? What will you look at? Consider placing pictures of family and friends or Jewish books in the space or covering up or removing electronic items that might distract you. Um, another thing is just getting dressed up, you know. I mean, a lot of people are having Zoom meetings. They might just put the top part on and still, you know, be in their tracksuit pants. But I think getting dressed up and feeling the real spirit of the Yontif um, would help. So it creates a feeling of nobility and importance. Um, some people might even wear a kittle, the traditional white um, garment that some people, um, men usually wear to symbolise the purity of the day. So what can we wear to evoke some specialness? So it could be something new or putting on something that has some meaning to you. Um, also some Rosh Hashanah, some sounds, some melodies that are unique to the, these days. You could think about the melodies or tunes you want to learn in advance and that you can sing or, you know, have in mind when, when Rosh Hashanah does come. Um, cooking, you know, like any good Jew, this is a, 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 a holiday of food. So food's an essential part of the Rosh Hashanah experience. There are symbolic foods like dipping the apple in the honey to symbolise a sweet new year, the head of a fish to represent the hope that we finish first in our endeavours, or simus, which is a sweet carrot dish. And on the second night, we eat a new fruit. So what symbolic foods can you create with your family and try and have fun with it? Um, also, just connecting with others, connecting with your family, just because we're physically separated, we can even cook with our family on a video call or preparing the same recipe, which gives people some connection. It might even be a chance to share memories of a beloved family recipe that you've eaten before. Um, Connecting with others, as I said, because of, um, you know, the, the isolation, uh, we usually would gather together as a community. It may be fit, feel strange not to be praying in a room full of others on this holiday, but there are still ways to create a sense of togetherness. So, for example, if you don't use electronics on, on the Yontif, you can schedule a video call in advance to give friends and family, you know, wish them Shana Tova or um, uh, think about asking your family to do a few things at the same time, either during prayers or meals. I know some of the synagogues are also having a pre yontif um, prayers as well. Um, also writing letters. We've lost the good old art of letter writing. Send a letter in the mail, which is a nice departure from, you know, our dependence on screens and emails. Maybe they're reflections on the past year or ideas about ways to bring holiness to the world in the year to come. Or maybe they're just personal messages. So I think that's just a nice touch and people know that you're thinking of them. Um, the shofar, um, we in a sense can all find our inner shofar. So the core ritual of Rosh Hashanah is the sounding of the shofar, which is the ram's horn. Um, there may be some synagogues that are doing it in the neighbourhood, so that might be an option, but there are some other alternatives. So the purpose of the shofar is to help us connect with our inner truth. Um, to evoke repentance and mimics, it does some believe mimic the sound of crying. So this can also be done through simple breathing. So um, meditation, try setting an intention of something you want to bring into your life this year. So you can inhale and something that you want to remove from your life, you can exhale. You can also think of the shofar as a breath. So it can be taken either, even further by breathing in the form of the shofar sounds. For the long single tone known as takia, we can take one deep breath in and exhale. 
For the three shorter ones known as shavarim, you can take three deep breaths and exhale completely after each. And for the quicker ones, which is Tarua, we can take nine quick breaths with quick bursts of exhales. And then there's the final um, Tikiya Gadola, the, the big Tikiya, and, and we can exhale everything from our lungs. So it may have, you could probably notice the impact on your body um, when, you, when you do that, and it does also um, act as a good relaxation um, exercise. So um, we, um, I'll talk now about a bit about um, some self care um, things that we can do to look after ourselves. Um, so no, the, um, it's imperative that we focus on ourselves and take care of our own emotional, spiritual, and physical well being. Self care is a general way of living where one prioritizes their own well being, and it can be broken down into separate components. So for example, spiritual self-care, that's to help nourish your soul, find inner peace and give you a greater understanding of life beyond yourself. So it doesn't necessarily have to relate to religion, but it may for some people. So the, it's basically a connection to something bigger than yourself and it can help you find purpose and meaning in life. It can give you strength to keep going when times get difficult and inspire hope. So medit an example of this could be meditation or spending time in nature, which a lot of people do find relaxing. Um, there's physical self-care. This involves activities that improve your physical health, such as exercise and diet. Not that Rosh Hashanah is the right time to start dieting, but um, it also means just taking care of your health. It's been reported that a lot of people are neglecting their own health during COVID because they may not want to go to hospital, but it just means keeping, you know, getting a regular checkup from your doctor, if possible, a regular health check. Um, it's important to stay active in a way that's fun and rewarding for you, such as going for a walk. I think just as important as physical self-care is mental self-care, and that um, involves activities that clear your mind and reduce your stress levels. Taking care of your mental health can seem difficult, but by scheduling time each day for your mental health, you can reduce your stress and improve your happy, overall happiness. So this may include reading a book, a craft activity, a lot of, I'm sure knitting and crocheting has come, there's been a big resurgence of that during this um, COVID time. Unplugging for technology or taking a class. So an online class is some of the things that could help with your mental self-care. Another one which is closely related is emotional self-care. So it's caring for your emotional health in order to attain emotional well-being. Just becoming more in tune with your own emotions, checking in with yourself, becoming a bit more mindful of the triggers, your triggers and thinking patterns and finding ways to work through them. So this can take, you know, just taking time for yourself, writing in a journal, practicing gratitude, um, reflecting or sharing with others, such as a close friend or leaving positive notes for yourself around the house. Um, I don't know if many of you have heard of intellectual self-care and it means doing something that you enjoy and challenges and nourishes your mind and expands your knowledge. So like learning a new skill or learning a new language, watching a documentary about a, a topic that you're interested in. Um, Social self-care, because we are by nature social beings, it, it might look different for introverts and extroverts um, because of our levels of comfort in different social situations. So connection is important to all of us. And during this time, particularly of social isolation, it's a lot more difficult to find those connections, but you can still make time to catch up with friends or family either by phone, social media, or for a walk, which is probably the best option. And soon, I think, I don't know if they're increasing um, it to two hours eventually. I think one hour is with kids under 18, but we can hope we've got some extra time coming in the future. 
Um, sensory self-care can help you nourish your senses. So sight, smell, touch and sound, which is an effective way of bringing your mind to the present moment and helping to lower your stress levels. Um, burning a scented candle, listening to soothing music, walking barefoot on the grass. And particularly, um, you know, I remember sitting in shul usually on Rosh Hashanah, just listening to the sounds of the shul. I mean, it would be a very different one, but we can listen to the sounds of, you know, of our home and, and um, the different things that we associate and think about the sounds that we usually associate with Yontif. Um, so if you do, just looking after yourself, and I think that is imperative and paramount. Um, uh, okay, um, we can, Nothing, nothing can um, replace the company of family and friends, but reading an uplifting book can help. Look, look through your bookcase and you'll probably find some hidden gems. Um, you can have a different author to, you know, look at and, and learn from. So there's a quote by Mark Rubenstein, who's a rabbi, and he said, Rosh Hashanah is the creation of the world. It is a time to recreate ourselves by recognising our faults, repenting and asking forgiveness from others for our sins, all leading to atonement granted by God for our actions. So who not some people believe in the concept of, um, you know, asking friends and family for forgiveness. So who have you not yet forgiven? Will forgiveness be possible this year? Could it start today? Start planning, planting the seeds of these thoughts. Um, on the actual day of Rosh Hashanah, what you can wake up and think, what is the feeling I wish to embody? How might I get to the place of feeling that way? This could be, you know, just setting some sort of ritual, going to sleep at a certain time the night before or meditating on the morning of. It could be a, a radical, just making some change to your life or how you, you know, like in a sense, a New Year's resolution, what you want to change for the coming year. Um, community we know matters matters more than and ever so you know we've all heard the, the COVID ad we're all in this together um, the Hebrew word for together is yachad so my wish is that together we can capture the optimism love and unity which will define our Rosh Hashanah celebration this year um, Synagogues and Jewish organisations are making plans to try and create meaningful high holidays, but to ensure, you know, now without services that they still offer their congregants and members, members something to help build, or, um, you know, connection. Um, so who needs you? Maybe it's a child, maybe it's a community of people, an old friend. Um, how will you lend your life to theirs for, in Rosh Hashanah 2020? Just thinking about the people that we can reach out to. Um, you know, we all know what we'll be missing this year. There's no touching of the Torah, hugging a loved one, dancing around the shul, or either gathering with your friends or community for a meal. But we need to find innovative, innovative ways to bring tangible ele elements to our home and, and, and to the life of others. Um, I, I think there's one thing that I should mention because of all the mental health issues going on in the world. Um, this Friday, the 10th of um, September is Are You OK Day? So it's actually a national day of action when we remind Australians that every day is the day to ask, are you OK? but that's the day if someone is in, in your life is struggling. There's a very good website, ruok.org.au, that can help you to know what to say when someone says they are not okay and how to actually continue a conversation that could change a life. Um, you can just to help people feel more supported um, and there's that let them know there's appropriate help around and, and hopefully make a difference to someone's life. So you'll probably see the ads on TV, but I just think there's a real scourge now in the rise of um, mental health issues and there's a lot more funding being govern given by the government. And it's just something I'm really passionate about, just checking in on people. And, you know, usually most people say, oh, I'm okay, but you can also tell by the way they say it and that people are struggling. So, I um, mean, 
them four main steps that basically ask, help them open up by asking questions such as, how are you going? Mention specific things that might make you concerned for them. Like for example, if they seem a le less um, chatty than usual. And then you listen, um, take what they say seriously, don't interrupt or rush the conversation. Um, and just even repeat the conversation in your own words so you make sure that you've understood them correctly. Encourage action, like things like what have you done in the past to manage a similar situation? And if they, you know, encourage them to see a health professional or if ask them if there's something that they could do for themselves now that they would find beneficial. And also just checking in them in the future and say you've been thinking of them and stay in touch. Um, if you do worry that someone might be suicidal, there are different, um, you know, organisations such as Lifeline or Beyond Blue that can be can, um, can be contacted for crisis support. But if a life is in danger, and I'm sure you all know that triple zero is the most, um, uh, at, you know, the, the most relevant thing to do at a time of immediate danger. Um, so this Rosh Hashanah, I know I'm trying to put some positive spin, but I'm also acknowledging that it may be a difficult time for many, but just we should be aware there's support available if you or anyone is struggling. Um, sometimes it's only through discomfort and difficulty do we see who we really are. So this Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we should all embrace the opportunity and find out who we really are. A people with the Jewish people with a wonderful and incredible heritage who have survived thousands of years of persecution and challenges. Um, so a key message is reach out to anyone who might feel vulnerable during this um, high holiday period. Um, we can still continue with our traditions, still continue with our prayers or however, you know, the symbolic foods or whatever you usually do. It's just in a very different, um, different way. Um, we can still make it spiritual, meaningful and peaceful. When you look into your heart as a new year starts, you may discover a new sense of possibility, a new belief in the gifts you have to share and a new commit, renewed commitment to your faith, faith and dreams. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to connect with you tonight. I hope you'll all take away even something small that may help this Rosh Hashanah become more meaningful during isolation. And Shana Tava to you and your families. May hopefully this new year be sweet, healthy and happy. The Shana Tava and hopefully we'll all be back in synagogue and enjoy festive meals way before next Rosh Hashanah. So thanks. Um, I'm happy for questions, but maybe we'll hand it back to Judy or Gabby. Thank you so much, Sharona. I know that uh, because of you, I'm going to do a few different things over Rosh Hashanah with my wife and children and trying to make it that much more meaningful. And you touched on in the beginning, you started off um, talking about loneliness. And Rosh Hashanah is not just the creation of the world. If you look into Jewish text and tradition, God created the world on the 25th day of Elul. That's when God created the world, six days before Rosh Hashanah. But on the sixth day of creation, what did God create? I'm getting everybody to think about uh, their childhood memories of Cheda and Hebrew school and Jewish school that you went to. But on the sixth day, right before Shabbat, God created Adam and Eve. So on the first of Tishrei, the Hebrew date of Rosh Hashanah is actually the creation of man. And throughout the liturgies, the poems, the tefillot of, um, of Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, we actually reference Hayom Harat Alam. Today is the creation of the world, meaning not necessarily the physical world, but because man, human beings are the safeguards and we are here to watch over the world. That is why we refer to us as a mini world through um, our tefillot, the prayers and the liturgies on Rosh Hashanah. But what's interesting is that throughout the story of creation, after every day God created the world, he said the Hebrew word tov. For example, he created the sun and the moon. He said tov, which means good created the birds and the trees, Tov, it is good. He suddenly creates human beings, mankind, he creates Adam, 
and he sees something a little off. And God goes, it's in the text, it's in the Torah, he goes, Lotov Yotadom Lavado. It is not good for man to be alone. He realized that Adam, Adam Arishon, was lonely and it was not good. Now, what's interesting is we're all, you know, this COVID-19 pandemic has led to a loneliness epidemic. We're all suffering in our own ways. And, you know, hopefully, and I bless everybody here tonight that you have a strong relationship because it's just the moment, just you and your spouse. And, you know, we're only allowed outside for an hour and hopefully it's only going to get stronger. But at the end of the day, we're all dealing with different things and it's been six months. So understandably mental health issues and loneliness and, and so forth. But we have to understand what did Adam have to sacrifice. He had to sacrifice something in order to not no longer be lonely, no longer be alone. If you look into the biblical story, he had to sacrifice a rib. God formed Eve from a rib of Adam. So God said, if you no longer want to be lonely, you've got to go out and try and make that connection. You've got to make that sacrifice. What's interesting is, now we're getting really, I guess, uh, technical and rabbinical, is that the Hebrew word for sacrifice mean, is karban, from the Hebrew word karov, to become closer. That when Adam, or when one of us, make that sacrifice to reach out to somebody that might be lonely, might be having a tough time, having a bad day or so forth, that needs that companionship. We're not just helping them, we're also helping ourselves by making that sacrifice. Making that sacrifice draws each and every one of us closer to one another. And it's more, just as important now than six months ago at the start of this wretched pandemic. And as we come up to Rosh Hashanah, where there's so much talk of renewal and doing different things and restart. Well, the Jewish calendar is, gives us this yearly, has this yearly reset, this reset button. And I joke with congregants lately that it's actually been Shabbat a rolling Shabbat because we're not really able to go into an office because we our work hours are somewhat sporadic and, and so forth. And we've been at home with our family for the majority of the past six months. It's in a way a mini Shabbat. But the real question is like this. We've talked about resetting. We've talked about relearning. We've talked about evaluating the first theme of Rosh Hashanah is Teshuvah. Now Teshuvah means to repent. That's the run-of-the-mill translation of the word Teshuvah. And it comes up again in liturgy, or Teshuvah, or Tefillah, or Tzedakah, with repentance, with prayer, and with charity. Well, we can disperse or we can push away this evil decree. The first step to really doing Teshuvah, to returning to who we really are, is by acknowledging our wrongdoings. And I think most of us have had a long time, uh, you know, have really looked into our lives and may, really made a solid evaluation. But real change is tough. Understanding that there's an issue or that there needs to be some type of change, well, that takes its respection. But ultimately, the first step is recognizing that that needs to be done. The second step is rectifying that. That's one of the themes of Rosh Hashanah, recognizing and then rectifying. How do you rectify it? Well, if you need to reach out to somebody to say sorry, if you need to be a little kinder, not just to the people around you, because it's a high, we're all high anxiety and we're all doing it, you know, quite tough at the moment, but also, we're not the best at being too kind to ourselves, Sharona, and you touched on this. It's important to check in with yourself. It's important to recognize that there's some things that are just 
out of our hands. And if we re- need to rectify different character traits, different reactions that we have throughout the day, or if we need to take a little bit of time out, well, that's all part of the theme of Rosh Hashanah. So there's, and then the third one is then to making a resolution. A resolution that whatever it is and whatever you've rectified, whatever you apologize, whatever this introspection of whatever it's led to, to then make a solid resolution that it shouldn't happen again. Now, ultimately, we're human beings going through an incredibly tough time. And most of us have not, I guess, um, been hit with the different obstacles and challenges that we've been hit with over the past six months, whereas work, family, life, finance, economic, and so forth. And realizing that it, you know, that some things are ultimately out of our hands, which is another theme of Rosh Hashanah. And if this, if these six months haven't taught us anything, well, I go back to that. Uh, I lean back on that famous Yiddish expression, as a mensch tracht und Gott lacht, that we all think we've got it worked out. We know where our five, ten, two, three-year plan is. We know exactly where we're going in our heads. You know, we should be, um, we should be aspiring to go to different places in our life. We should be looking ambitious for a better job and to, you know, better, have a better life for our family. But ultimately, it comes down to, and God lacht. And God, he has a bit of a laugh because as much as you think that you've got it all worked out, well, ultimately, it's not always in our hands. And I think ultimately, these six months have taught us that. But the sound of the shofar, one of the reasons why we blow the shofar and the mitzvah of the day of Rosh Hashanah, every Jewish holiday has a type of mitzvah, is besides for Sharon, you touched in and it was great. It's a cry, a penetrating cry that comes from the depth of our being. But it's also a coronation. It could be looked at as we're coronating God as king over us again. And when you blow that shofar, besides for doing, you know, I guess, teshuvah, returning to who we're really supposed to do, which is in essence a good person. We're all inherently good, I think. Um, and then, I guess, blowing the shofar and then at the same time thinking, you know what, ultimately, God, it's up to you. You've put us in this situation, you know, help us get out of it. You know, hopefully, we will all have a shana tova umutuka. We will have a happy, healthy, sweet new year. Well, we throw, up, we throw it up to him and we say, you're the big boss. You're, you're, you're the one that's, that's, you know, I guess, judging us, so to speak, metaphorically. You're the one that's inscribing us in the book of life. And this is all part of... I guess these are all men, things mentioned in the liturgy of the day. It's also, so it's one aspect to just be kinder to yourself. And then also letting go and understanding that these six months, it's always been like this. Things have always been out of hand as much as we thought we were in control. And we did, we felt very much in control of our lives and where we were going, but ultimately, Things mostly at the moment and usually aren't. And so it's a way of just sort of releasing that same negative energy and restarting and saying, you know what? There's a higher power. I'm trying to, you know, I'm going to connect with it. I want to tap into that and I'm going to say, you know what? God, I hope I'm blessed with a happy and sweet new year. It's funny because we talk about, you know, Teshuvah, which is repentance. And then the next one is Tefillah, prayer. I think prayer is, um, is something very personal. And I know that over the years, the machzor, as we go into shul over Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, it just keeps getting bigger. Sharana, don't you feel that every year it's that big, that big, as that from a child, you know, it was huge. And now it's even bigger than what it was as a child. Like how many rabbis had to add their little poetry and their prayers for the day? Well, that is actually the truth. If you want to break everything down, there's very few prayers that we actually have to say. And over the centuries, different communities, different rabbis have added, and you know, there's the famous concept in Judaism to 
increase, not de decrease. There's no such thing as de 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 decreasing in any way, in anything holy or anything Judaic or rabbinic. It's funny. It reminds me of the story. There was a time in the Jewish period, in, you know, in, a, in the Jewish period, I think it was a time in the Macedonian Greeks, they were, they laid siege and they were, they were actually ruling over Israel and they banned the reading of the Torah. They said, Saturday morning comes. No, the Jews can't gather. So what happened was, the Jews said, no problem. We won't read the Torah, but we'll read a portion from the pro prophets, from Tanakh. And they, they found something similar that spoke about something from, the, from the, that, that week's Torah portion that they could sort of draw a parallel on from the prophets. And they were reading it. So when, they were inspe when there was an inspection, Oi, what's going on over here? Well, we're not reading from the five books of Moses. We're reading from the prophets. Then after the decree was lifted, whatever war was fought, and then, the, you know, ultimately the Jews were able to get on with their lives. So it was a big discussion. What should we do? Should we stop reading from the prophets and just go back to reading from the Torah? And one rabbi gets up and he says, no, <coughs> we can only increase. We'll read from the Torah and we'll read from the Hof Torah. And that's why, my friends, we have to sit through reading from the five books of Moses on a Saturday morning and then the prophets again as well. Because we don't decrease, we only increase. Prayer, and that's where we get such a big machzor. That's why the machzor is so big. So you can blame it all in all those centuries of Jews and so on and so forth. But Jewish prayer is a deeply personal experience. And I compare it to a meditation. That's like we start at the very bottom of a meditation and we slowly get further and further and deeper and deeper into it. Well, the same thing is with the machsor. We start off in the morning with just the basic prayers, thanking God for restoring our soul, mora ani, thanking us, thanking God for giving us intellect and so forth until we come to the Shema, declaring our unwielding faith in Hashem, our, uh, acknowledging that everything comes from him until we get to the Amidah, which is just us together with Hashem in his chamber. So do you see how we went from one rung to the next until we come to the climax, which is the Amidah. Now this can happen daily, depending how, on how often you pray. But for the majority of us, when do we really come to Shul? We come on Rosh Hashanah. So try and we won't be in Shul and you won't have a Chazan and a Rabbi leading it. But I still am very, I, I encourage everybody to open up a machzor for a few minutes throughout the day on Rosh Hashanah, depending on how serious you want to get with the meditation. And you don't need to necessarily read the Hebrew. If you struggle reading Hebrew, well, that's not much of a meditation, breaking your teeth reading the Hebrew. Do you understand what I'm saying? Make it easy for you. And I tell people, even when they do come to shul, the chazan is there just for show. He's literally there just for show. He's there to lead the prayers. So if people want to pray, he's there to tell people where they're up to, what page number they are, or how to follow along with him. You're there. You should be doing your own thing. It's your own personal connection. I think the general connection and that feeling of community will be lost this year. It definitely will be. We won't see... Um, Shmuel and we won't see Joel and we won't see David, those once a year people that we knock into and he sits in my seat and then his kid comes into my seat. I kick his grandson out of my seat. I say, hey, I paid for this seat. This is my seat. And you know what? I mean? We won't have those, you know, sort of, <laughs> those sort of uh, interactions with those people. And, sure, and you know what? It's going to be tough because that's really part of the experience, seeing these people. But ultimately, we're able to do everything at home. And as soon as we come around to that reality and say, you know what, I'm going to take it seriously. I'm not going to rely on my rabbi. I'm not going to rely on the chazan. I'm not going to rely on the drosha for inspiration because there isn't one. Then we take our relationship with God, our connection, our real introspection, the whole reason and the, all those penetrating blasts of the shofar, we bring them into our house. We bring them into our home office, as Sharona mentioned, taking a putting aside a place where this is going to be my seat. I didn't pay $3,000. I didn't get ripped off by the shul this year. It's for free. Sorry, your mortgage. <laughs> You're paying your mortgage. My point is, this is where I'm going to play. It's my set place. You pull out that machser that you had from your bar mitzvah. You open it up in the morning of Rosh Hashanah. And you start reading in English. Don't bother reading the Hebrew if it's too tough. 
it's not a meditation if you're working and doing it. Taking a moment and just reading and just trying to connect. And some of these middle age prayers, liturgies that are there, they are incredibly moving. Absolutely. They're incredibly moving. If we talk about Una Sana Tokef, it was written by somebody on his deathbed that describes the awesomeness of the day of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It really brings home what the idea and the point of the day is. Again, it's owning your Judaism, owning your heritage, you taking initiative, just one year. Again, if I had to say, if we, I had to do this next year, it would be a tragedy. But I think it's seeing the silver lining and saying, I'm not relying on anybody this year. I'm going to do it myself. Which comes to now the blowing of the shofar. The blowing of the shofar, I haven't got my shofar, I'm sorry, I left it in the car. But let's go very quickly through. What is the point of, this, of those sounds? And I know that the, my colleagues, the other rabbis, are working very hard to be able to go from house to house or from park to park or from residence to residence, building block to building block, in order to blow the shofar for people. So if in case they're elderly or they're not able to blow themselves. And it's not easy. It's like it's not learning a musical instrument, but it actually takes a little bit of... Um, a lot of effort uh, to, to, to blow the shofar by yourself. But that, my friends, is the actual mitzvah, as I touched on. It's that cry, it's that yearning, it's that wake-up call, that's an alarm clock. Like, guys, where are we? It's to bring home that real introspection, ponder where we are. Now, again, we've been doing that for the past six months, but we have to make those resolutions firm, lasting. We don't want to fall back. Once we're out of this lockdown and over the, out, out of, in, in the clear of this pathogen, we don't want to fall back on old habits, like the saying goes, old habits die young. So the, the shofar, we blow the tekiah. Well, <clears throat> that's really the start of the bracket. That's the start of everything. Doo, it's that cry. It's long, it's penetrating, but it's also quite upbeat. There's, there's, actually, there's actually nothing really, there's nothing really there. It's, you know, I'm here, God, I'm blowing the shofar, I'm looking into myself, but it's, things are going along. I'm quite happy with my life. I'm not that, I'm not quite there in my meditation or in my life to make some real changes or to really bring the things home. But then we blow the shvarim. Do, 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 do. Now, the shvarim, represents brokenness. And I think we all have had bad days this year in our lives in general. And we've all, some of us are holding on to things of broken shards that we've been carrying on our, uh, carrying on, you know, mentally, psychologically, we've been carrying them on, some of us since, a ch since our childhood. Things that really we can't let go and that we carry along with us. Well, we're actually calling out to those and we're saying, you know what? We're recognizing them. We're here to work with them. We're here to work on them, to really try and see if we can make them whole again. And then the next one is the trua. That's shatteredness. That's not just brokenness. That's not just the old habits or the old feelings or resentments that we have. That's when throughout this year we've been at our lowest ebb. That's when we've been incredibly shattered. We've been really, really broken. It's been terrible. That's when sadly some of us have been at our lowest. We've lost our jobs. We've ruined relationships. We've wronged people. That is the point of the trua. Do, 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 do. We're really crying out. It's a real sobbing call. But the Shvarim and Trua are what? They're together. They're blown together. There's no lapse between the two, the brokenness and the shatteredness. Until we go to what? A tekiah again. A do. That what? Oh, as low as we've been. All those peklach, all those things that we've carried on or that we've gone on about or that have niggled at us or have really made our life hard. Those losses, that's brokenness. Well, guess what? I'm whole again. I'm restarting in my life. 
I'm pushing away those character traits. I'm making amends with it. I've become whole again. And we do it over and over again. So there's a real introspection. We blow 100 times on the shofar to really bring home. Again, once isn't enough. We really want to go deep. Think about, meditate, understand where we're holding. But what do we finish it off? That kiak dola, that long blow, that huge, that what? As bad as it's been, it's only going to get better. We're coronating ourselves. We're coronating God. We're making out men's. We're whole. We're pure. We've restarted one more time. And what? This year will be so much better than the next. And I'm just going to finish off with charity. Just be kind to yourself. To shuva, repentance, to fila is the prayer that we actually say, that we meditate, that we blow the shuva, and the charity. Charity, tzedaka, doesn't necessarily mean charity. It means righteousness. It also, that's the better translation. Tzedaka, we think, oh, here, here's to the poor. Here's something to the poor. Oh, this guy's a shenara. Let me help him out. It's coming to Rosh Hashanah. My rabbi will be held. We'll be happy. It's not that. It's what? It's righteousness. It's justice. It's really... Becoming that better person within ourselves, within our relationship, and within the wider community. And sticking up for justice, having stuck up. But most of all, checking in with ourselves and being kind with ourselves. Because if we're not kind to ourselves and if we're not feeling good, as Sharona brought home in her, in her talk, if we're not feeling good, well then, there's no point of any of this. So my friends, I'm going to finish off with, really, it's okay to have a bad day, even leading up to Rosh Hashanah. And understand that we're all, we're all having a lot more of worse bad days than we usually have. But ultimately, and if we're having too many bad days, then we need to speak to our local GP and get a mental health plan and speak to a psychologist and so on, or a social worker and so forth. But coming up to Rosh Hashanah, there are, I just want to bring home that point, that there are systems in place to help you. But coming up to Rosh Hashanah, it's time for real introspection. It's time to really make the past six months to come to terms with them, to come around to the reality, but also to prepare for a better, brighter, and the theme of Rosh Hashanah on the high holidays, a sweeter future. Shana Tova Umetuka. I think we'll now take some questions for myself or for Sharona. Yashakoa, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? No. Really? Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, Isaiah. Hi. Hi. Hey. I just, uh, look, uh, look, I've been doing some meditation, but sadly, some of the meditation online has got a, uh, a, a religious twist that I don't particularly like. So is there anything purely Jewish? I mean, I'm doing some searching and it's really hard. To find anything, you know, just Jewish a, meditation. A, Jewish meditation. It, yeah. it, it comes in the form of a prayer book. Yeah. Really, it does. With having a read of the prayers in English or in Hebrew or whatever is easier to translate, and then pondering deeply on the words, on the verses of of the, of the siddur of the prayer book, and within Rosh Hashanah, the liturgy and the poems of it. You know, just. Avino Malkano, that's one of the themes of the High Holidays. Avino means our father. Malkano means our, our king. There's close to 40 verses of Avino Malkano. One of those verses is, which I've, you know, throughout every, throughout the years, I've just read. I haven't really pondered it. I haven't had time because I wanted to be together with God. One of the Avino Malkanos is, make sure, God, please don't bring a, a, a plague onto us. Isaiah, I promise you this year, when I read that, I will be meditating. Avinu Malkeinu. Don't bring a plague or take away your plague. I'll probably twist the words. So it's called kavana in Hebrew, having the right intent. And that's by slowly reading, pondering, meditating, deeply thinking about what you've read what you're, and what, you've, what you're saying out loud, what you're singing. 
but then ultimately making a resolution to put that into a day-to-day -day sort of into a tachlis, into a bottom line, to refine your character traits, to become a better person. That's Jewish mysticism meditation summed up in less than 30 seconds. There's also, I don't know if you're aware of Spirit Grow, I think it's, um, there's, they do some Jewish meditation courses. I've done something myself there, so that's something else you could look at to spirit grow. thank you thank you both i didn't know about spirit growth but i'll yeah. try that out yeah. right. by label wolf yeah yeah okay any well, don't be shy any other questions how's your time <laughs> okay Well, Judy, were you? Yeah, I think I think that we're there. I thought that, uh, thank you both. I, I think both your presentations were really uh, inspiring and complemented each other, but certainly covered so many different uh, angles of uh, what people may be thinking and uh, possibilities for personal improvement and connecting more closely with themselves and with the community and with our families. Um, so I personally think it was really wor very worthwhile uh, and hopefully uh, all the participants uh, enjoyed the different insights. Uh, I think it's really interesting to hear, um, you know, from the different backgrounds and, and how so many really strong themes come through, uh, but in a, with a different theme uh, from it. So, you know, I think that was really good. And I think that uh, we all are going to be facing a very different uh, Rosh Hashanah and uh, Hagim period, but hopefully it will be a very meaningful one for everyone in their own way and with their own families. Uh, and uh, we really wish everyone a very uh, Shana Tova and a very peaceful and uh, as well as possible, uh, positive uh, next few weeks, leading to much happier times and healthier times in the year ahead. So on behalf of the JCCV, we thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope to have another spiritual health session later this year, probably late October, early November. So please look out for that and, uh, and wish you all a really nice evening. Thank you very much. And now to bye, everyone. I hope it's good for all of us. Yochanan, and thank you for, for joining from all the way up in the Freedom. Freedom Land, is that it? We can't hear you. We can't hear you. No, I can hear you. I just unmuted myself. Yes, it's been uh, very interesting. Yeah, up in, on the Gold Coast. Oh, nice. I'd love to That's be good. on the Gold Coast. Yeah. We're, we're very fortunate, I have to say. Um, yeah, I have a daughter in Melbourne, and um, yes, it's hard. It's very hard for you, I know. Um, hopefully, it's all over very, very soon. And we can all travel. <laughs> yeah, that's so it. I can it's a joy. Melbourne. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you for all listening. Bye. Bye. Judy, do you want to call me? I'll. Um, Are you there? Or I'm not. I think um, I'll just, that's actually, uh, that's my mum. I'll tell her to hang up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll just ring her. Uh, one minute. Sorry. She's, she's okay with technology, but she might. Hi, Mum, get off the, um, all right, just get off the Zoom, okay? okay. Thanks, bye, bye. Okay, oh, did Gubby go? Oh, my mum will go. I thought, I thought he would have stayed on. Oh, okay. Well, okay. quite a few people, and people, people came and went as well, so that was really good. There were 10, 10 or 12. 
Um, I counted 16 all up okay. and my mum my mum will go with there. Yeah. She's gone. Yeah. yeah. I think no, oh, it was interesting. Yeah. And I, I think people hopefully gain something and yes. you know, we do our best and yeah, yeah, Jennifer was there. Interesting to see what Yeah, well, I was she I was thinks. pleased. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I, I like your presentations, they have a sort of a a format. I think that uh well, yeah, sort of just he just sort of pulls it. I mean, he's got a lot of knowledge, obviously. I know, but I kind of made it into like, you know, I wanted to give an overview of the social climate, tips on self-care, yeah. you know, how you can care for the community, new experiences, and then yeah. tying everything together. Yeah, I didn't do slides this time, but I think it's... Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of stuff and I was conscious because I knew that he would like to say it. But what he said was really interesting very and nice. it did part it into the nice. shop. What, yeah. What's nice about him is that even though he's an author, guy, he's so accepting, he just sort of goes with the flow. He's, he's realistic. You know, he, is, he did. Um, one of my kids sent me something. He interviewed a whole lot of football players and he was very funny. And I said to him today, oh, that's pretty amazing. You said you did it for someone's bar mitzvah. So, yeah, he can mix with yeah. all sorts of. Yes. Yeah, no, he's I think. Young, he, you know, he's a young guy and, and he's really good for this sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. He makes himself available and, and he has that knowledge, you know. So, if you've got some more religious people um, connecting, they feel that they can bounce off a bit. Yeah, and, and I, he doesn't push religion. I liked, yeah, I would have yeah. liked a few more people, but, you know, it was... Okay, we, next was time. Fine. Yeah, yeah, I think it was fine. But I think trying, people were... Or, you know, we're trying. Yeah. Yeah, and people were, were, they stayed for the whole presentation. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I saw you with a Kaplan who I've known for years and a few, right. yeah, it was, just, it was good. good. Um, are you free to walk tomorrow? Tomorrow's not, not, well, tomorrow I'm probably, I'm going to try and walk, do a walk in the afternoon, but I'm going to be meeting my son. Okay. Right. I'm going to come to the house because. Okay, so you've got to meet him somewhere. Yeah, but maybe, I will, maybe. I'll come around Thursday. Yeah, I'll see how I go. All right. Okay, call but, me. But I would and, like and to I'm, because it's a way to. I'd love to. Yeah. I'd love to walk with okay. you. And that's not on, it's just us. Yeah. She I didn't have much to do I, with it. Just, I think what? everything's still being recorded, I think. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. But thanks everyone. Yeah. Is it being recorded? Um, yeah. Okay. Fine. I don't know how to I don't know. It's up, wait a minute, but there must be like a master master switch yeah but i don't know where it is okay oh okay that's fine but no everyone did their their good job and and you know i think it least... all went fine yeah i think it all went fine but okay. well, i'll speak with you and uh, okay you call me and, and let me know when you can yeah. walk right yeah thanks so much Judy. Right. go and, and rest nice now well, my husband's too. watching carlton on they're playing football tonight. Oh, is he a Carlton fan? Yeah. You don't know what happened to me last Pretty week with sad. Carlton. I've made the best Carlton contact. I didn't know he went for Carlton. You know what happened to me last week? I entered this competition to win a car. I didn't win a car, but they were giving away um, football jumpers with, with your names on it. So we don't go oh. for Carlton, but my nephew does. And now Giddy's probably going to do the merchandise for Carlton for next year. So whatever oh, really? my husband wants, um, he, I can get it. But do you need some gardening equipment? So you well, I one of my sons is a landscaper. Oh my god! One of my kids, what what's his business called? Well, he work he works he does he does private work, but he he work is employed. He's not allowed to say where he works. Okay. Confidentiality, but he works for a very prominent Jewish family. Okay, because but my seriously, kids well, seriously prominent. No, no, I'm sure my kids have landscaped our whole garden during COVID. We got a oh, quote for like 70,000. They did it. Yes. They did it for, so, and one of my sons that's, is doing, yeah. He's oh, actually wow. a horticulturalist, so he goes okay. for a lot of equipment. Well, okay, well, if he needs, but I'm happy to, whatever you want, I can send you the email. I'm happy to give you some yes. stuff. He's got so much. So what, he imports it? 
Yeah, he imports all the kitchenware and hand tools and, and corporate gifts and things. So he does oh, everything. Okay. He's like, okay. you know, you cut through the middleman and um, right. yeah, you can get okay. anything. So I'll, okay. I'll send you the email, or the um, yeah. website and um, if you need, but just for yourself, if you want something, I'm happy to bring yeah. it on to you. Okay, sounds good. Good. All right, we'll talk. Thanks, okay. Judy. Take Bye. care. Bye. Thank there you. Go. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.